Hi, everybody. Welcome to Jenkins Boatworks. I am Chuck Jenkins. In this video, we continue working on our San Marcos stand-up paddleboard. There's going to be two parts to fiberglassing, so we'll have two videos. Basically, one is one side and one's the other. And through the process, I learn a few little tricks. And even though I've been doing some fiberglass work for many years on canoes and kayaks and that sort of thing, uh, you can always learn more. So uh, hopefully we will be able to get it all put together and in the process learn something. We're glad you're here. If you are new to the channel, uh, please consider subscribing and get in and dig around if you see anything you like. Uh, we have lots of projects, not only this stand-up paddleboard that we've been working on, but uh, like I said, some canoes and kayaks, and of course our big five-year project that was the Haven 12 and a half sailboat. So uh, if you do like it, please consider subscribing, and when you subscribe, click the little bell. You'll get update notifications on future videos. All right, let's jump in and get some more work done. All right, let's see what this looks like. Oh man, they bubble wrapped it and everything. Wow, that's cool. 12 yards. 12 yards, that's good. All right, now we gotta get in here. Look at that. Uh, okay, we got to cut some of this off. <laughs> Looks good. Really don't have any snags. Not hanging up. Part of that's because this board is so smooth. I think we're gonna just get a lovely finish on here. Really do. We got this cloth laid out on here and it's had, oh, a couple hours to just kind of sit here and relax. I'm probably gonna take the paintbrush to it just one more time and just make sure we got all the wrinkles out. but. Honestly, I think it's about as smooth as we're going to get it. In height and uh, it got it away from the sawhorses. The other thing that's going to allow, it's going to allow this cloth to lay right down on this rail here. And I even can kind of push it under there a little bit to hold it because we're going to try to put our epoxy right on around this rail, right as we're going. So... We're gonna use West System with a slow hardener and let's get it going. Oh, I'm very excited about this. Woo! It's gonna be awesome. Okay, so what we got going on here is we're using West System epoxy, uh, the 105 resin and the West System 206 slow hardener. Uh, I believe it's a gallon and a quart. I think you can just barely see the containers over there. Uh, I like West System. And one of the things I like about it the most is the pumps. Uh, a lot of people like to mix up their epoxy by weighing it. And that's probably your most accurate method. But I have never had these pumps fail me. Never have I ever not had a good mix. And uh, it always is cured. And I just, uh, I kind of feel like this is the Cadillac product. There's a lot of other product out there you can use. Maz, uh, Total Boat. Total Boat makes a good product. Um, uh, there's any number of, of epoxy companies and resins, but 
West System actually was the original inventor of it and they continue to do a lot of research um, and just develop their product and, and it's always been cutting edge. So it's one of those things where it doesn't cost that much more to use what I will consider to be the best. So that's what I do. You wanna make sure that it's, that the hardener mixes in with the resin, otherwise it won't go off. The other thing about this is it's a exothermic reaction. So it'll start getting warm, but where we've got the slow hardener, um, it'll take a while. We're gonna have plenty of time to spread this out. And it's not, it's not hot outside. It's maybe it's 65 here in the shop. So, and that's probably about as warm as it's gonna be in here today, because that's another thing you generally want is for your temperatures to be going down, not up, after you've applied this. So, I'd say we're a good two minutes right now. Let's go one more minute, can't. Be interesting to see how much we have to mix up to get this, get this side done. All right, here goes nothing. You can see that I'm pulling the epoxy over the edge down onto the rail. It worked okay doing that and the cloth laid fair, so we got some applied that way, but it would drip. So we're gonna use a paintbrush for the majority of this in the future and we'll show you that. You see any little white spots in there, you wanna Kind of go over those, push on it just a little bit. You can already see how that's making that a mahogany just pop out of there. That's beautiful. I can still see my two little holes that I drilled for my handle right there. So I know where that goes. I was kind of wondering what would happen when we there's a hole here for a leash plug. That we Something else about this, it doesn't have any rough edges on it, so I'm not catching the cloth and snagging it. You don't want to do that. So we haven't had that happen, which is nice. Just kind of let it go, let it pool just a little bit till it soaks in, it takes it a second. You want to work from an area that you already did in case it's starting to set up. Plus, if you have to push your cloth to get rid of wrinkles or anything, that's why I started in the middle. I could work out. If I have any wrinkles or whatever, I can push them, push them this way or push them that way. Now, there's a little bit here that where it looks like it's not wanting to get through the cloth and get down into the wood. But you just run it over there like that, kind of push on it, and basically push it through the cloth. And I can already see some areas where we're on there thicker, and some places where we're on there thinner. And um, where it's thinner, I can see the weave of the cloth. Even though it's saturated, I can see that I can see it's just not as thick, and that's okay. In fact, as long as it's saturated, I mean, we don't want to starve the cloth, but as long as it's, um, you can see through it, then you know you're good. See, but like, you can't see that, but right there, I can see the weave, and that's why we come back later and do the, the next coat that's called filling the weave.
This wet out stage is really pretty fun. You have to work kind of quickly, but you can take your time and just enjoy it and just smooth it out, let it soak in. It's called wetting it out. And there's a reason why, and then you just kind of pull it and bring it and do the whole thing. I kind of pull it at almost 45 degree angle. And then when I get into new stuff, I start lowering it down. I try to smooth it as it comes forward. So about 45 degrees. And then when I'm off to the cloth here where I want it spread out, just kind of lower it down and let it, let it pull forward and spread over the whole thing. I had some concern about how this cloth was gonna go over these edges. But it's just hanging very neatly and it's pretty easy. It doesn't, it's not creating any bumps or ridges or anything. We just got it sanded smooth enough that it's, it's just laying right down on there. When we do the other side, we're going to do the same thing and let the cloth hang over. And that way we should create a double layer of cloth on the rails. You may be able to see where I'm making lines in it from pushing down a little too hard with the squeegee here. I still have I still have resin mixed up here that we'll put on here so we can finish this. Maybe just the right amount. I just didn't want to get too much on here. I can add more, I can't take it off. Sometimes people do this whole thing with a paintbrush. You can do that. You have more control. I mean, I think you can even see that right now. You can kind of use it to Push it in there. Okay, I'm going back over here where I started. All right, if I do this again, I will not bring my resin that I'm squeegeeing or, or uh, using the spreader on this far to the edge. I'll leave, leave a, a little margin. And the reason is because I'm kind of having to unload my brush like this and then pull it down like that. Otherwise, my brush is upside down and all the resin's running up into the, like toward the handle. Instead of coming out where I want it. And I can't really go sideways like this because I'll pull the cloth funny and I don't want to do that. Pretty much have to do it just like that. It's obviously working okay this way. It's interesting when you do something like this, you learn little things and then you can apply them later, especially if you still have more to do. When I flip this and do the other side, you'll see that I do a slightly different technique based on what I've learned. Okay, I came up with a new idea. I kept uh, dropping epoxy out of here when I would put the brush in here. And this is actually a little bit too small for the brush. So now what I'm doing is I'm just taking and pouring just a little bit right on the edge there. Now I know exactly how much I've got. It's not loading up the brush and I just pull it over. Just come right down and over right on the rail there. Not getting too much. That actually looks like it needs a little bit more. It takes it a second to kind of soak in there. I wonder if that's starting to set up. That's really running slow. It's okay. Just 
You can still see a little bit of white, a little bit of white weave there. We don't want that. We want to saturate that and get down in the wood. You can see that the surface area of the rail gets thinner as we get up here closer to the front. So it was important to go from the middle and then move up toward the front. We got our first layer of fiberglass on. <clears throat> this is a four ounce cloth. We used our West System epoxy. And boy, it sure lets you see how the grain looks. Man, that's beautiful. Very happy with it. It's kind of splotchy in places. There's just no way to get this epoxy to lay completely smooth and flat when you're doing it. We will have to come back and fill the weave. There's places where you can see the weave of the fiberglass cloth. See right in here. So we'll come back with another coat several hours from now. But boy. That's fantastic. If you like the video, remember to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.